So then we have the uh, consumer and business uh, use of uh, uh, private networks or Wi-Fi. And uh, there's been a lot of changes in Wi-Fi. Uh, we do now have technologies with higher bit rates uh, that you know, lend themselves for video streaming. Um, there are some complications, and I'll get into that. And some of this still requires analysis. Uh, some of the 802.11 AC uh, capabilities, um, the vendors are still figuring it out. Uh, that there's some, there's some, there could be some potential issues. Uh, if we look at the traditional or the, the uh, traditional Wi-Fi band or the original 802.11, uh, the 2.4 gigabit per second or gigahertz, uh, we can have uh, up to 11 channels, but you can see in the picture here there's really only three channels that don't overlap or interfere with each other. Um, now, if these channels are spread out on a larger venue, so you know the north side of the facility is using channel one, the south side's using uh, channel three, and they're far apart. You know, so with some coordination, um, um, you can't use all 11 channels simultaneously all on the same basketball court, for example. Um, you would have to do some coordination. Uh, so, so you can see the limitations. There's really only three channels that don't overlap. But then you're competing with laptops, smartphones, security cameras, etc. Uh, and and uh, newer phones now are also newer devices are supporting the five gig band. So I'll get to five gig in a second. But the beauty of 2.4 it's unlicensed. Uh, the negative is that everyone's using it because it's unlicensed. So you have unpredictable coverage and interference. Uh, you'll do some wireless tests at a sports venue when no one's in the stands, everything works great. Then when there's 50,000 fans in the venue and they're competing to Wi-Fi to Instagram uh, their photos of the game or whatnot or put things up on social media, you're competing for that bandwidth. Now there's ways around that. If you have higher gain antennas and a higher signal strength uh, or due to directionality of antennas, you know, we're going to use more sophisticated antennas than you're going to find in your, your little uh, uh, cell phone. So uh, uh, we'll have signal priority. We will we'll break through above the noise. So there are ways to combat this. Um, the other benefit of 2.4 gigs is because it's lower frequency, it, it goes through walls. It um, uh, go, uh, is not as susceptible to obstacles when compared to five gigs in higher frequencies. So there are some 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 benefits. Uh, so you know five gig band, you know it's less less usage than 2.4 gigs. A lot of broadcasters and professionals are already using five gig. Five gig is starting to be be utilized by smart devices. Uh, I'm not sure if the new iPhone six supports 802.11. Uh, AC or, or the 5 gig band, I believe it does. Uh, um, you probably can turn it on and off. Um, when we engage with the National Hockey League to make them a wireless in-net goal camera system, they did not want to use the 5 gig band. They had some voice over IP, some announced systems, telemetry systems at a lot of these hockey venues and uh, they had some very severe interference issues at some very critical games you know, playoff games, final games, where buzzers, the, the hockey horn got stuck on. So um, um, in that case, we chose 60 gigahertz because it's the best of both worlds. It's unlicensed but very directional. There's no interference. It doesn't interfere with other systems, nor is it susceptible to being interfered with by other systems. So again, we help you with these decisions. So you look at the, the, the uh, 5 gig band, you see, wow, look at this. We got 24 some odd non-overlapping channels. That's great. Look at that. And then, you know, here here's the different bands. But we 802.11 AC addresses this uh, dynamic frequency selection. And then right in the five gig band, we have uh, Doppler radar usage. And the 802.11 AC spec uh, states that if radar is detected by any device or router. It has to shut down within 500 milliseconds. And the router has to detect five microsecond wide Doppler radar pulses. So it's very complicated. So uh, some vendors actually recommend 
uh, avoiding this band entirely, um, just just to stay away from it. So so you know we don't interfere with radar. So you know you see here 802.11, we typically had these nice 24 20 mega, megahertz channels. So we had to compress our video down to 24 20 megs and fit it into these channels or compress it down and go into these 40 meg channels. You can see the new spec, the 802.11 AC offers these 80 meg and 160 meg channels. But if we look at the footprint of the uh, dynamic frequency selection, if we want to avoid that, we have no access, I'll show you on this, uh, this side slide here, so you see we have no access to the 160 meg channels and we only have two 80 meg, four 40 meg, and we have uh, 10 to 9 uh, of the 40 meg channels. So you can see here, this is the dilemma. Some of these things need to be sorted out. Um, here in Irvine, we're close to the John Wayne Orange County Airport, but I don't think the Doppler radar signal reaches uh, our facility here. But, you know, it's not uncommon for a sports venue to be near an airport. Uh, there could be Doppler radar in a downtown area near some broadcast facility. So these are things that need to be considered in frequency coordination. Um, um, not very many vendors are addressing this uh, 160 mega, mega, megabit per second or megahertz channel yet. Uh, uh, maybe there hasn't been demand for it yet or we're just trying to figure things out. Um, Maybe the standard needs to be modified. I'm not sure, but I'm not an 802.11 expert per se. But uh, there needs to be some uh, additional dialogue, or we just need to go in with our eyes open. Uh, you know, we only have four channels here in the 40 meg band if we exclude the dynamic frequency selection. So uh, another uh, development, uh, 802.11n and AC address this uh, MIMO, as, it is, as we call it, which stands for Multiple Input, Multiple Output Arrays. And what that means is uh, multiple transmitting antennas are inputting into the uh, system, and multiple uh, antennas are receiving or outputting from the system. So you see you know, all modern routers, a lot of our wireless communication systems will have anywhere from one, two, or four, or even five uh, antennas, and we're using some sort of, of MIMO. And uh, the nice thing about MIMO, it, it uh, thrives in reflections. What it does is the signals bounce all over the place. They're in different polarizations. They bounce off the ceiling, off of walls, off of obstructions. Uh, the receivers will time these signals to line them all up to, to, to to take a bunch of small signals, add them together to make a, a stronger signal. So it works really well, uh, uh, but there are some limitations. A lot of the, the, the 802.11 AC uh, allows higher modulation schemes, which decreases signal to noise, uh, makes it more susceptible to interference. Um, again, you know, a lot of this is theoretical. You know, we talked about the spectrum problems, but you know, you can have up to uh, uh, 1,300 megabits per second throughput, again, theoretical, you know, if you have the spectrum available to you. Uh, so I, as I mentioned, so it creates multiple signal paths. Uh, it add, it, the, the bandwidth of each antenna is additive. So, you know, 20 meg, 20 meg, 20 meg, you can add up to quite significant amounts of throughput. Um, um, it can be susceptible to interference if you're uh, using the higher order modulation schemes. Uh, adaptive bit rate and, and the complex modulation. Uh, adaptive bit rate doesn't work so well with video. You know, if the router is throttling the bandwidth here and the encoder is pushing high bandwidth, you need an adaptive encoder to go along with the adaptive wireless communications. The two need to work together. So uh, it gets complicated.